Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6. Today we're going to be reviewing Episode 2, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing Episode 2. I really, really love this episode. This episode was like... 10 times better than the premiere. I really like the premiere, but this was a really good episode. I had a few problems with it, but that was mainly to do with the villain of the week, because that wasn't really the main focus of the story, and the main focus was on Crisis, and also, you know, Jay Garrick, and Iris, and Barry, and that stuff was so good. So let's talk about it and break it down all in today's video. But before we go into this, turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. I should be having a Flash trailer video out later today, but also, I'm going to attempt to watch Arrow and to get that video out. But that could be the next day just due to the fact that I have to make these two Flash videos. And then I don't know if I have time to make a third video. So we'll have to wait and see. But Arrow is definitely getting a video either today or tomorrow. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the first thing. So we start off where we started at the end of the last episode. And so Barry is reminiscing over the newspaper, but not in a good way. He's talks about like the effect and how the article has now changed and maybe it's not his fight against Thorn that makes him disappear and so I really like this opening I thought it was a great opening just keeping it tight on Barry's face showing his emotions and showing how you know he's really screwed he doesn't know what to do and so then we move on so he gets the idea to time travel into the future to see the day after crisis and see the effect that has been caused by crisis and so he puts a mobile Gideon in his ear I thought that was very intriguing because you know we've always been theorizing when is Barry gonna create Gideon and everything like that he's obviously advanced Gideon in this new way just today but also you know I think it's getting pretty close to when we will see the introduction of Gideon maybe okay so he uses that and he attempts to time travel so he runs Gideon's like Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3 and then you see this sort of ray of light as he fails to actually time travel and he's exposed to antimatter which Dr. Jay Garrick is an expert on antimatter as says Mobile Gideon. So that's crazy, that's our first introduction really to Crisis and what's happening and that's our first you know name drop of the antimatter universe or you know the idea of antimatter so he's hit by it and it would have you know disintegrated and evaporated a normal person if being hit by that as seen by some scenes which we'll talk about later but that stuff really hurts him and so he has to find a way to actually you know find out about what what is blocking the speed force why can't he time travel and see this and that's because you know there is no day after December 10th Okay, so we go to Jay Garrick, because he's an expert on it, as said by Mobile Gideon. So he goes to Earth 3, and we get reintroduced to Jay. Really great seeing John Wesley ship around again. And so Jay has been detecting antimatter for the past year or so, and he believes all Earths are in danger. And then we get the reveal of Nora Allen, Barry's mum, but not Barry's mum, it's actually Joan Williams, who is Jay Garrick's new wife is in fact a scientist of sort and they work together and that's how they found each other and I got chills watching this scene they put on the flash theme music and it's just like really touching seeing her again I, I don't know I, always when we see different versions of Nora it always gets to me and I'm sure it gets to a lot of you guys and so yeah so Jay's been detecting all this antimatter for about the past year he's got this diagram of all the different Earths and you know how everything's gonna be affected and so it's really interesting that he knows about this already, but, you know, now he has just finally revealed it. So he's obviously been detecting and didn't want to tell anyone yet. And so Barry uses this machine that Jay has built so he can see into the future. He uses Jay Garrick's helmet. He's in sort of this, like, electric type chair, and he gets, like, buzzed essentially into the future. His mind is there. He gets to see what happens. And so this is what happens. The city is destroyed. Ralph... Caitlin and Cisco at first die then we go back to Barry and then we go back to that version of the future and we see Iris West getting killed so she's taken over by the antimatter and that kills them all it kills the whole city destroys the whole earth essentially is what you're seeing and so Barry dies 
in Crisis as well. You actually get to see him running. This was the best scene of the episode, the flash forwards. You see him running and he dies in the comic book way. He disintegrates. If you've read Crisis, you know that's how he dies. So I got major chills. I was freaking out over this scene because this is straight out of the comic books. And the fact that they showed everyone dying really put stakes into it and really affects Barry. And that was a holy shit moment where I was like, damn, I'm impressed. This was really good. So best moment of the season so far. It's going to be hard to top that for a while. So yeah, Barry says after that, after Joan actually, you know, Barry's mum on Earth 3, she reads him a poem and it mentions A Flash of the Lightning, which is the title of the episode and that's also the title of one of the issues of Crisis and that is the issue in which the Flash dies, so that's a really great reference to that. And Barry says when he wakes up, he says, I saw billions of possible futures, billions of deaths, all their pain and suffering, now I know the monitor is right, I have to die. So this is him coming to the appreciation that, yeah, shit, this future, there is only one way in that everyone survives, it's if I sacrifice myself, like in Crisis on Infinite Earths when he sacrifices himself in the comics, that's the only way, and he realises the monitor is right, but it's not a choice he's having to do, it's something that you know, must happen. It's not that he's trying to do it to, you know, get away from anyone or to do it out of, you know, heroics. It's just something he must do. And I think the fact that, you know, the stakes are so high, him seeing Iris dying, him seeing Caitlin, Zisco and Ralph all dying as they're being engulfed by the antimatter which spreads across Earth 1, it's a really great way to actually, you know, lead it into crisis. Okay, so the only way they survive is if Barry dies and then it's at that point Barry and Joe get a scene together Barry can't move because he's all stuck because of him using that machine and it's given him some sort of paralysis or something for just a short while and he reveals everything about crisis to Joe Joe gives him a little pep talk Joe you know talks to him and sort of inspires him a little bit and so that is what leads him into actually being the hero he's supposed to be to make that sacrifice later in the episode Okay, so that's mainly the Barry stuff, we'll talk a bit more about that in just a second, but let's go back and talk about Killer Frost. So, Killer Frost has no eyes that are glowing anymore, there's no strange voice, you know, it's courtesy of Ray Palmer and his nanotech, as the meme goes, literally something similar to that was said, literally from Ray Palmer though. So she's fine, she's just Frost now, she's not Killer Frost. And so she goes to this exhibition, and like we see Camilla quite a few times in this episode. Some nice moments between Cisco and Camilla in this episode. And she's looking around an art gallery, and she's not appreciating anything basically. So she's very one directional. And so, just quickly, the only thing that was not so hot in this episode was Allegra Garcia, Ultraviolet, in this episode. Because she didn't have much time, and she wasn't that interesting. She was just like a juvenile that got away. It was a case of a copycat, you know, pretending to be her, to frame her, it was her cousin. I mean, it was alright, but like, it was nothing special, especially compared to like the rest of the episode and how good everything else was. So yeah, we have this scene between Frost and Cisco. she's drawing, and it's, you know, it's really funny. There was a lot of funny moments in this episode, especially when Barry wakes up and he's like, Yo, what did you put in these painkillers? when he sees all the artwork on the walls and yeah that was funny there were some funny moments in this episode Cisco, Killer Frost and also Ralph delivered those really well and so the big bad is Ultraviolet is revealed in this massive fight scene in CCPD so they have this fight scene everyone's losing because she's so powerful with her Ultraviolet rays and it's at that point that Barry is called and Barry is told to stay there although you know he's getting this alert but he has to do it. He knows he's the hero. He must do it. And so he gets hit by the ultraviolet rays because they travel faster than his actual speed. And so he makes a sacrifice and he runs into it. It's after he flashes back to Joe's sort of pep talk to him. And he realizes he must make that sacrifice. And I'm here like, go on then, Barry. I love you. Like, that was a great moment. I loved that because that really shows the hero within inside of himself. And so he defeats her. And 
at the end, they talk about some assassin group, and I think they're going to be brought into it. Not the League of Shadows or, you know, anything like that, or the League of Assassins. That is going to be, I think, you know, brought up again sometime later in the season, so look forward to that. And so Allegra, Iris, and Camilla work together. That was just one of the ending scenes at the Central City Citizen. And then we get the return of Jay and Joan Garrick, and so they return, they're on Earth 1, and they talk about a little hope, and, you know, just seeing his mum and dad, you know, together, although it's not his mum and dad, gives them a little bit of hope, and that was just some really nice moments, especially with Barry and Iris this episode, like, I've been really impressed with Barry and Iris, like, you guys know I really love them together, but, like, I've been feeling these moments, they really work for me, and so... Barry will never give up and he's preparing the team for a crisis, for this crisis, and for a world without the Flash. So that's his mission for the next few weeks, I reckon. And so then we get to the ending scene of the episode and we, the victim's blood from blood work has actually changed and it turns out he's resurrected. So that's kind of interesting, but that will just be answered straight away at the start of the episode. It will be something to do with blood work's powers. Yeah, nothing too special right there. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications. And I'll catch you guys later for my Flash trailer breakdown. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.